Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In today's video, we are going to discuss about embed or report web part in SharePoint Online. In today's video, I'm going to explain you each and everything about this process, how to do it, what are the requirements, and what you need to know. So let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. The very first question comes in our mind, what is it and why do we need it? Well, with the Power BI report web part for SharePoint Online, you can easily embed interactive Power BI reports in SharePoint Online web pages. In my previous video, I have received so many comments that people wanted to know how to embed their Power BI report into SharePoint so that they can share with their entire organization who has already the access of SharePoint and they can start rendering their reports over there using the SharePoint. When using the embed in SharePoint Online option, the embedded reports respect all item permissions and data security through row level security. So you can easily create secure internal portals. That means whenever you are going to use this process, your reports can be secured via row level security and all other permissions that generally you manage in Power BI service. However, there would be certain items won't be available over there. For example, your subscription or your other kinds of services like the Power BI admin settings that you use over there. But you can assign permissions and I'll talk about them later in today's video. Now let's discuss about the requirements. What are the requirements for embed a report web part in SharePoint Online? The very first requirement is a Power BI Pro or Premium per user license or Power BI Premium capacity like EM or PSQs with a Power BI license is required. Secondly, the Power BI web part for SharePoint Online requires modern web pages. What are modern web pages? I'll provide you a link in the description so you can check over there. Basically, SharePoint has two kinds of web pages, classic and modern, and this can only work on the modern web pages. And lastly, to consume an embedded report, users must sign in to the Power BI service to activate their Power BI license. And in certain cases, if your organization has enabled single sign-on, then you can use the same account over there too. So basically, you're going to use the same email address or user account to log in for both like SharePoint Online as well as Power BI service account. Now let's have a demo and see how to do that. Currently, you can see that I'm on my SharePoint website over here. I have created a SharePoint website and the very first thing you have to do, you should have your new page on your SharePoint website. But before going that, we need the link that we are going to embed over here. So for that, I'll come over here on my Power BI services and I'll click on this file menu over here and you will find this embed report. Over here you will find three different options and one of them is SharePoint Online. So I'll click on this, copy this address. Once you will copy this, then you have to go back to your SharePoint website and over here you will find this button new. And you will get several options over here and we have to choose page. Just select like that. Here you can choose a template if you would like to, but I'll go with the blank. Just select like this and create page. Once you will create page, you have to provide it a name. So I have provided a title over here and you can see your account should appear over here like my account is over there, audit account. And now what we have to do, we have to add an item over here. So how we can add? Either you can start by using text or you will find this plus icon. If you would hover over here, it's like uh, adding a new item over here. So you can even start describing what is this report, why people should use it or what is the purpose, etc. And I'll click on this one. And here you can directly search Power BI or you can just scroll down and you would find Power BI somewhere, which is over here. So I'll click on this one and here it's asking me to add report. We can click on this add report and the very first option is Power BI report link. The link that we just copied, we have to paste it over here. 
and give it some time the pages are going to populate you can see that your report has been populated over here and it's going to be very interactive and it's going to behave the same way as it behaves on your power bi service for example if i'll click on this you can filter it out you can even do your drill down or drill up or you can select any particular point if you would like to likewise it's going to behave like the same even you can create your bookmark so you can export and all the other options are going to appear over here except you cannot just subscribe it and there are a few limitations as well basically it's just for the rendering purpose rather than subscribing or performing a lot of other operations that are available into your power bi service now you can select the page names over here the which page you want to appear first i can do that or you can just keep it a default then you can choose even your display size as well and if you would like to switch your filter screen you can just switch it on and same like the show action bar so if i'll just switch it off action bar you won't see any other actions that they can perform but it's a good practice if you would like them that means to your end user to use this action bar you can enable it so these are the couple of options that you can do once you are done with everything then even you can save it as a draft or you can undo the actions that you have performed and here you can move the web part if you would like to or you can duplicate the web part and certain other options are available over here so i'm gonna save as a draft so it has been saved as a draft now you can see draft has been saved on 7th of august 2021 i can publish it from here and this is gonna be the address so I'll copy this and if I would like to share with anyone else I can do the same so you can just click on plus paste this address and here is your report so as we turn on the filters and the section bar everything is appearing over there you can see the different pages you can interact with the report so this is a sample report by Microsoft which I just embedded over here. If you would like to try, you can also try the sample reports provided by the Microsoft. You can find from their website. And I hope this is going to be very helpful for you because in organization, people want to share most of the stuff through SharePoint only. So it's going to be very helpful. Now let's discuss about the grant access to reports. Embedding a report in SharePoint Online doesn't automatically give users permission to view the report you need to set up view permissions in Power BI and there are two ways. The first way, if you are using Microsoft 365 group to build your SharePoint online team site is to list the user as a member of workspace within the Power BI service and SharePoint page. So once you are going to do that, once you are going to list your user as a member to that particular workspace and the SharePoint page, they can access the report. And for that, you can even create the groups so that the number of people in a group can view without any problem or without any issues. The second one is to embed report within an app and share it to directly to the users. So we can embed our report into an app and then we can share that link directly to the users. So this is another way. So these are the two ways that you can grant the access. And if you would like to know more about this one, I'll provide you again the link in the description so that you can go over there and you can check yourself. Then question comes about a multi-factor authentication. We know generally whenever we are working in our organization, there are two way to log in into our accounts like for example on azure if you are trying to log in over there it's going to ask you to provide a password or the code that is coming onto your app or on your mobile phone to log in over there apart from your password so in case of this process too we have a multi-factor authentication and if your power bi environment requires you to sign in using multi-factor authentication you may be asked to sign in with a security device to verify your identity which is generally the case even if i'm logging in into my power bi account i always use the multi-factor authentication if your power bi account has a multi-factor authentication but your sharepoint doesn't have so in that case too you have to use the multi-factor authentication to authenticate yourself because basically it's gonna ask you to access your power bi service rather than the sharepoint because all the accesses are basically coming from the power bi service itself 
So that's it guys for today. I hope you really like today's video. For more exciting videos, you can join us via different mediums so that whenever we are posting any new videos, you don't miss it.